Okay, starting my fast now. Just so everyone knows. All right? Good. All right, now that they think we're fasting, we're really not fasting. We're just mimicking fasting. But we gotta be quiet though, because if I hear me, the jig's gonna be up. Wait, what? Yo, yo, yo! What is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are diving into some new and exciting research that was recently published in Nature Communications, exploring for the first time the effects of vitamin C and fasting, well, fasting memetics, on a common cancer mutation, or KRAS mutant cancer cells. And to give you a little perspective on these mutant cancer cells, 30 to 50% of colorectal tumors are known to have a mutated KRAS gene. Oh, and colorectal cancer is the third leading cause of cancer deaths in men and women, and the second most common cause of cancer deaths when men and women are combined, whatever that means. So first, I want to start off with the obligatory disclaimer. This research was not done in humans. It was done in vitro, aka a petri dish, with human and mouse cells, as well as in an animal model, a mouse model. And just as a reminder, because I need to remind myself a lot of times, petri dishes and mice aren't humans. I get confused too. All right, so now that we cleared that up, Let's boogie and talk about the players in today's conversation. First, vitamin C. A little history. Over the years, pharmacological doses of vitamin C, azorbic acid, have been proposed as a potential anti-cancer therapy. And this is based off a number of preclinical and clinical trials. How does vitamin C potentially work? Well, Vitamin C has been seen to exert its anti-cancer effects by causing pro-oxidant reactions. These reactions lead to the formation of hydrogen peroxide and cause damage to the cell, driving it to cell death. Now, previous research has indicated that KRAS mutant cancers may exhibit a higher susceptibility to vitamin C's anti-tumor effects, thus making this generally non-toxic compound a potential weapon against this very aggressive tumor type. But, and there's always a but, right? Although vitamin C could potentially be effective in treating patients with KRAS mutated cancers, it's unlikely that vitamin C alone would be sufficient to wipe out the cancer and the many escape mechanisms of the tumor. Therefore, the search continues. Enter fasting memetics, stage left. Stage right. Any stage at all. There it is, FMD, fasting mimetic diets. So fasting mimetics is very interesting. Its goal essentially is to trick the body into thinking that it's in a fasted state when it's really being fed. Now, when I say fed, we're talking about fed in a calorie restricted model. Low protein, low sugar, higher fat typically somewhere between 10 to 30% of your daily normal calories. Now, what does the research say? Previous research has shown that fasting and fasting mimetic diets reduce tumor size and sensitize different types of cancers to chemotherapy treatment. All this while protecting normal healthy cells from the chemotoxic side effects. Wow, it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? This phenomenon is called differential stress sensitization, where the normal cell protection and the cancer cell sensitization can be mediated, at least in part, by its effects on the insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1, signaling pathway, as well as glucose levels in the body. Pretty cool stuff. So what if we put these together? And you're not going to believe it. That's what this study did. I know. What a coincidence. The study. Researchers set out to find a highly effective and low toxicity treatment for KRAS mutant cancers. 
And for this study, they specifically focused on colorectal cancer. And you guessed it, they tested the effect of a fasting mimetic diet on potentiating or boosting the anti-cancer activity of vitamin C. They tested these by themselves and then in combination with chemotherapy treatment. Again, with the focus on colorectal cancer. First, they looked in vitro or in a little Petri dish. Researchers took both human and mice mutant KRAS cells and grew them under conditions of normal nourishment and short-term starvation. Now, the short-term starvation was used to mimic the reduction of extracellular glucose and growth factor concentrations that occur during a prolonged fast or a fast over 48 hours in a organism or, you know, organism our size because the stages of fasting a little different for a mouse than for a human than for an elephant. Anything bigger than an elephant? A whale? Wonder if whales fast. I digress. Vitamin C was then added to the intervention groups while a set of control groups stayed constant. Here are some of the highlights from the results. Researchers found that KRAS mutant cancer cells were more susceptible to the vitamin C than the wild type KRAS cancer cells. So this means that vitamin C was more effective affecting these mutated cell cancer cells than the non-mutated cancer cells. Researchers also found that when cancer cells were grown under the short-term starvation conditions, vitamin C mediated toxicity was strongly enhanced. Hmm. 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 Now remember, this was all happening outside the body in Petri dishes. So let's see what happens inside an organism. Not a human, but a mouse. Consistent with their in vitro results, researchers found that fasting mimetic diet cycles, FMD cycles, combined with a daily vitamin C treatment were effective in delaying the progression of KRAS mutated tumors in mouse models. Weekly cycles comprised of a three-day fasting mimetic diet was sufficient to reduce the KRAS mutated tumor growth to the same extent as high doses of vitamin C. And when put together, weekly FMD and daily vitamin C showed the best therapeutic outcome in reducing colorectal cancer progression in these mouse animal models. And as a little side note, the combination of FMD and vitamin C were tolerated quite well by the mice. There wasn't tremendous weight loss and it was quickly regained when feeding cycles resumed. Now, you may be asking, what about that last hypothesis they were supposed to test, right? How does it work in conjunction with chemo? basically the most prevalent cancer treatment on the planet right now. So when we look at previous studies, we've seen that fasting and fasting mimetics sensitizes different types of cancer cells to chemotherapy through a mechanism that involves increasing the amount of reactive oxygen species produced, ROS. This study's results have shown that a combination of short-term starvation, fasting mimetics, and vitamin C selectively increases reactive oxygen species in KRAS mutated tumor cells, which is then further potentiated or boosted by chemotherapy. It was found that the triple treatment of fasting mimetics, vitamin C, and chemotherapy was the most active therapeutic intervention in delaying tumor progression in the mouse model, indicating that chemotherapy can further boost the beneficial effects of fasting mimetics and vitamin C in KRAS mutated cancers. I gotta say, all this is pretty damn cool. But seriously, it's cool. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that there's some pretty compelling groundwork laid for some future studies and what the authors hope to be some clinical trials in the near future. As we know from many other examples, what happens in vitro in a petri dish or in a mouse model does not always directly translate to a human model. The good news is the fact that fasting mimetic diets have already been tested in human cancer trials and have shown some positive results. So hopefully the next steps are sooner rather than later. As for today, the here and the now prevention is always going to be your best bet. So keep on optimizing you. If you'll excuse me. I have to remind myself. Yep, still fasting over here. Nothing changed. We're uh, fasting all right. 
No food. Not me.